You're up to your neck in cold water. There's ice all around you. You've got to get out. When you're swimming in freezing cold water, your body can get a bit of a shock. Your reflexes might make you want to gasp, but don't. Just do your best to keep your head above water. Throw off any heavy objects like boots, jackets, or backpacks. When you reach some ice, don't just try and jump out. It's not exactly a swimming pool. Try to get into a horizontal position and use your strong legs to swim onto the ice. Use your hands to pull you out. Once you're on the surface, roll away from the edge, then crawl, then walk. If you're venturing into the wild, you may want to get some stuff ready beforehand. Make your own fire starter at home. Heat up some water in a pan, put a Pyrex container in there, and melt some paraffin wax inside it. Then take an egg carton and put some dryer lint in each section. Fill them with paraffin, wait till it's all solid, and cut out each little section. Just one of these little guys will make starting a fire way easier. Dental floss can be super handy for surviving in the wild. You can use it as fishing line with a can tab as a hook. Or you can use it as a clothesline. Just stretch it between two trees. It looks kind of flimsy, but a single strand can hold up to five pounds. It's also quite flammable, so if you're having trouble starting a fire, you can use a few feet of floss to start it up. You can make a seriously strong rope using a simple plastic bottle if you have a good pair of scissors. Cut off the neck of the bottle so it looks like a tall and narrow cup. Then, start cutting it like some people peel an orange, round and round in a spiral. Try to keep it the same thickness the whole time. It'll be a lot longer and stronger than you're expecting. You can use it to tie sticks together to make a hut. Or you can wrap it around your backpack in case it rips or something. Sugar might be damaging for your teeth, but it's got a pretty sweet superpower. Just pour some on a piece of cloth and use it like a Band-Aid. Oh, delicious. Mosquitoes can be a real pain, and there are loads of them around. You can make your own DIY repellent to keep those little guys away. All you need is an orange, a lemon, or any other citrus fruit. They're full of essential oils that mosquitoes can't stand. Peel an orange and rub the peel directly on your skin. Just make sure to crumple it a bit beforehand to help those precious essential oils come out. Another good way to keep the mosquitoes at bay is to add a bit of orange peel to your campfire. That releases the essential oils into the air. You're getting hungry, but you don't have anything to start a fire with. Empty your pockets. There might be something in there that you can use as a makeshift fire starter. If you have a battery and a metal chewing gum wrapper, you're in business. Cut a thin strip of the wrapper, long enough to connect the two sides of the battery. The middle of the strip should be thinner than the ends. Grab some dry grass, twigs, or even some paper, whatever you're going to use to start your fire. The foil strip should ignite right away, so make sure you're ready. A human can go surprisingly long without food, but not water. Depends where you are, but a lot of the time, it might not be safe to drink. You can make a DIY water filter. Start with a fire. Boiling the water may not be enough, so as soon as those ashes are cool, grind them into a powder. Don't just use any ash you randomly found in the forest. It might have some melted plastic on it or something. Then, you need a plastic bottle. Cut off the bottom and poke a small hole in the cap. Turn it upside down. Put about three inches of charcoal in and pour the boiled water in nice and slowly. The drips are ready to drink. If you're getting bits of ash in the water, wrap a piece of clean cloth around the cap for some extra filtration. A char cloth can come in handy if you're lost in the wild. To make it, you're gonna need a metal container with a cover. Put a piece of cloth inside it and put the container into a fire for a few minutes. The cloth should end up getting a bit black around the edges, but still be intact. A char cloth catches fire super fast, even with an old school flint. If you're ever hiking in an anaconda's backyard, listen up. Stay away from shallow rivers because these giant snakes love to hang out there. If an anaconda decides to give you a little squeeze, don't exhale. Every time you do, the snake's gonna squeeze you a little bit tighter. Anacondas do have a weak spot though. They don't like their tail to be bitten. It's not exactly delicious, 
but it'll get the job done. Avalanches are pretty powerful, so remember these tips next time you're out on the slopes if things get a bit hairy. First off, cover your mouth, use a scarf or some other piece of cloth, and don't let the snow in. Keep one arm straight above your head, and don't forget to dig out a little pocket in front of your face. That'll let you breathe for about a half hour. Get rid of anything heavy you're carrying, even if it's expensive. But make sure you hold onto your backpack. It's an extra layer of protection. And grab onto a tree if you see any. To get back to the surface, move like you're swimming straight up. Snow's just water anyway. If you ever somehow get trapped in a sinking car, don't panic and don't try to open the door. The water pressure from the outside will be too strong. You'll just waste valuable energy and that door just won't open. The best way to escape is through the windows. Roll them down and swim away. If you're not a great swimmer, you can try to create your own makeshift flotation device, like a plastic bag with air trapped inside. Tie a knot in it and make sure it's tight. A plastic bottle would work great, but one probably won't be enough. You can also use a raincoat or a pair of those waterproof pants. You can even use an upside down trash can. If you have some car trouble at night, out in the woods for example, you need light to see what you're doing. All you need is a bottle of water or a jug, or even a pickle jar filled with water. Just strap it on a headlight and voila, the water will spread the light so you can see better. Perfect for setting up an emergency tent or finding wood for a fire. Mason jars, those pickle ones, are really handy when it comes to storing matches. If you're camping in a forest, it's really important to hide those matches away, somewhere dry and safe. To make it even more convenient, make a strikeable lid. Cut off the strips on the side of your matchboxes and glue them to the lid of your mason jar. Before your next big outdoor adventure, make sure you're all stocked up on dark chocolate. Chocolate is probably the most delicious survival food, but it's also one of the best. It's loaded with calories and helps keep your mood up. Plus, you don't need a fork, plate, or fire to prepare it. Last one for today, people. Still having trouble lighting that fire? Look no further than that bag of chips you secretly hid from your fellow campers. Corn-based chips are everywhere these days. And apart from tasting delicious and turning your fingers a weird color, they have one more trick up their sleeve. You can use them to start a fire. These kind of chips are flammable, so make a little mound of chips and keep that dry wood handy. They'll light in seconds. <laughs>